For years, I've been telling you that Malaysia is a great business-friendly, affordable, pleasant place to live as a nomad capitalist, whether it's full-time or one of your bases in our trifecta approach. And some of you have asked, well, where exactly in Malaysia can I live? I know Kuala Lumpur, but are there other cities that I should consider? I'm going to walk you through all the places where I would suggest nomad capitalists consider in Malaysia in this video. Hey guys, I'm Andrew Henderson and here at Nomadic Capitalist, we help successful entrepreneurs and investors go where they're treated best by living and doing business and investing overseas. You can learn more at nomadicapitalist.com. Today I want to talk to you about some of the best cities to live in Malaysia. Not everyone likes to live in big cities. Some people want suburban environment. They want the beach. Everyone's a little bit different. So let's just go through the list. What you're going to be looking for mainly is living on peninsula Malaysia. The Borneo part of Malaysia, if you haven't seen Malaysia before, there's actually two different parts that are not connected. They're separated by water. The Borneo part is made up of Sabah and Sarawak. There are a few places you might want to live in there. The tax haven Labuan is there. And then Brunei is kind of stuck in the, in the middle, tiny little sultanate in the middle. Probably not as many opportunities for most folks to live there. So I would focus on peninsula Malaysia. And you've got about four main places. The first is Kuala Lumpur. Of course, this is the main city. It's the hub. It's got all the consumer conveniences. You've got malls in every corner. If you like shopping, if you like eating, it's all there. And you've got a great airport that is connected not only regionally, but really all over the world. So it's very easy to live. Everything's very pleasant. And for a, for a big city, people are very nice as well. So you can live in KLCC. That is the center of the city. It's where the Petronas Towers are, KLCC Park, all the embassies. It is the commercial city uh, center. You've got other commercial centers coming up. They're building the new Tun Razik Exchange a little bit further away. That's kind of an up and coming area. You've got more expat suburban areas like Bangsar. Uh, Mont Kiara is probably the biggest cul-de-sac of Malaysia, basically a place where you need to have a car to live. Those are the places that I would probably tell people to start looking. If you are a wealthy local, you might live somewhere like Damansara, Pedaling Jaya. That's more of a home. Uh, place to live. And what's interesting about Malaysia is you can buy an actual home, or as they call it, a landed property. You do not have to live in an apartment. You can rent a home. You can even buy a home because foreigners can own land. It's one of the only places in Asia where you can do that. And so even in Kuala Lumpur, there are opportunities to buy land and to own a home. But those are the places where I would start. If you like more of uh, a traditional Asian vibe, Southeast Asian vibe, and you want the water, then I've advised people to look at Penang. So Penang uh, is basically the one majority Chinese part of Malaysia. Obviously, Malaysia has numerous different ethnic groups. In most places, the Malays are uh, the dominant group. In Penang, it's a majority Chinese uh, state. And so the part of Penang you generally live on is an island. It's connected by a bridge, so it's not like a tourist island. It's an actual place with second largest uh, you know, metropolitan area in the country. And so you can live in Georgetown, which is a very interesting um, a bit more, again, Southeast Asian place. You've got more street food. You've got, uh, you know, different stalls. You've got your massages. You've got kind of more of that Asian uh, vibe. Uh, you've also got beach. You've also got water. And then if you kind of drive around the coast, areas like Batu, Feringi, um, all different areas along the coast, you can actually live on or, or near the beach, generally near the beach. So they've got villas. They've got uh, sea view apartments, you know, near the city center. If you like to be connected with water, now some people, they're used to being around the water, they want to be on the water. Kuala Lumpur is kind of close to the water in the, in the Klang Valley. Perhaps the, the closest place people go to go to the beach in KL would be Port Dixon, about an hour away. Uh, but if you want to be really on the water, then you would look at Penang. Now, if you really want to be in a resort area, you can go to number three, which is the island of Langkawi. This is the duty-free island in Malaysia, and it's right up there in the Andaman Sea, very close to the Thai border. And so, you know, if you like buying cheap booze, uh, that's why a lot of people go there. They buy you know, everything duty-free, uh, cosmetics, stuff like that, and bring it back. Uh, it's a lot more remote feeling, rural feeling. That's certainly changing as they've done a ton of development in recent years. You've got a lot of hotels, a lot of five-star hotels, people own villas. They've built more uh, properties, like again, sea view condos, villas for sale. Uh, the challenge in Malaysia, which is not really a challenge, but properties generally tend to be larger. So whereas many other Asian cities, you're going to be 
jammed into a shoebox compartment or a three bedroom might only be you know 700 square feet in malaysia it's it's very spacious and so it's hard to find a smaller villa in some of these places i think especially in langkawi it's very hard to find uh, it's hard to find a lot of uh, real estate available up there it's certainly a much more laid back slow pace of life where in kuala lumpur you're spoiled for choice i think in langkawi there are fewer options it's very much a, a village in sorts, and if you drive around, you'll see people just living in a, in a village atmosphere. Very nice, lovely people, um, but they live in concert with, with the tourists. And so what you've seen is a few more projects recently that have become, uh, that you've seen freehold projects. Generally, Langkawi had a lot of leasehold projects where you didn't own the actual you know, land. You had a lease on it. Now there are some freehold projects that I've been seeing. Uh, if you want a place where the internet's a bit slower, life is a lot slower, you're on the water, it's probably a nicer beach um, along the you know, parts of the island than you'd find in a Penang. So if you're looking for the ultimate best beach and you're willing to make some sacrifices for that, I imagine it's like living on one of the smaller islands in Hawaii or something like that. Um, it's like living in one of the South Pacific islands. It's a bit remote, although what you're seeing is both Penang and Langkawi are seeing now service including, I believe, Qatar Airways was flying there. So they're seeing a lot more uh, international connections. It's not like you always have to go to Kuala Lumpur. You're starting to see more, more availability for, for getting in and out. Uh, but certainly, Kuala Lumpur, the most developed, then Penang, then Langkawi. Kind of the wild card is Malacca. Malacca, for me, is a great weekend destination. I know there are a few expats that live down there. It's about an hour and a half to two hours south of Kuala Lumpur. You're on the water. Think of the Straits of Malacca. Uh, and so probably not a place where I think a lot of expats would want to, to go and live. It does have a bit more of that Southeast Asia backpacker feel, very interesting cultural influences from, from Malay to Portuguese, Dutch. I mean, there's a lot of interesting uh, cultural influences really everywhere in Malaysia, very multicultural, nice country. Uh, but Malacca, if you want slower pace of life, you're not that far away from the KL airport. It's a little bit disconnected. Things are a little bit slower. Might be a place that you want to look at. Now, if you want to really go your own way and you want to perhaps build a villa, you can find land in some of the up and coming, um, you know, beach areas, for example. Uh, so at Terengganu, for example, or over in Kuantan. There's some areas on the east coast that you're starting to see some more hotels open up. You're starting to see more tourism developed. Um, it's pretty easy to get around Malaysia by air. Uh, and so if you're looking for something that's kind of off the beaten track, Obviously, you're not going to have that many expat, um, expats living there. You're not going to have a lot of normal you know, Westerner conveniences. Uh, but those are kind of other wild cards you could look at if you're really looking to do something kind of away from it all. Um, and there are a lot of places in Malaysia that I think are nice to visit for like a weekend. For me, that's Malacca, you know, the Cameron Highlands. Um, they're building up Ipo, for example. So you've got a lot of beautiful places to go. Johor Bahru is another uh, large city that probably isn't a place where most Westerners want to go. So you've got a lot of options. I think for most people, it's going to come down to Kuala Lumpur versus Penang with kind of the smaller beach outposts as wild cards. But you have a lot of choices. And if you come to Malaysia, I think you'll find a place that uh, gives you the level of consumer comforts that you're looking for. If you've lived in any of these places, if you've visited any of these places, uh, I do want to hear your feedback. Leave a comment below. What are your thoughts on living in these different places? What neighborhood were you in? Did you rent? Did you buy? Leave a comment below and share your experience with us. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, Learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.